something so exciting that I can't get to the phone right now. <laughs> but if you leave a message, I'll call you back when both of my hands are free. Deeds, how many times do I have to tell you to stay away from my machine? Hello, please leave a message after the tone. Hello? Who says hello? You sound like you're selling Tupperware, and I do it again. I don't care about my outgoing message. Annie, your outgoing message is your poem to the universe. It's your chance to, to express yourself, to emote, to sing. <laughs> no, that would be Madonna's message. Can I please just get on with my life? What life? You're home alone on a Saturday night. No, I'm not. I'm with you. <laughs> Look a date by 9.15? That is not good. A good date is 3 a.m., tequila stains on your blouse, and your bra in your purse. <laughs> Actually, I should have been home by 8.15. You would not believe how slow this guy chewed his food. A boa constrictor goes through a wild pig faster. <laughs> you want to meet a more exciting man? Get a more exciting message. Now come over here. All right. Annie's message, take two. But this time with real feeling? Hi. Please leave a message when you hear the tone. <laughs> Excellent. You went with hi. I love that. Very user-friendly and so up, too. <laughs> anyway, I gotta go. Jim might call. Oh, Deez, come on. He hasn't called you in three months. Don't you think you fantasize just a bit too much? Look, if I didn't keep my hopes up, then I'd never be disappointed. And then where would I be? <laughs> well adjusted? <laughs> Very nice, but uh, not gonna lie to you, got a run in your stockings. What are you, the fashion police? No, actually, I'm a side. <laughs> Fun. I just do the fashion stuff for a hobby. Fun. Hey, hey, fuck your shirt. In. <laughs> you, play the polka dots. Don't let me come over there. <laughs> ah, my work's done. On behalf of a grateful city, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Just that most guys would come on to you and say something cornball, like, uh, you have the most beautiful eyes they've ever seen. Yeah, this guy already tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> and hey, hey, that's not working either. <laughs> See what I mean? Everybody goes through the eye thing. I just figured I'd give the leg thing a shot. Kind of, I don't know, rise above the rabble. Well, you are the first man ever to go with the pantyhose thing. And use rabble in a sentence. <laughs> So does that mean I get a first date? I don't think so. You know what, you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, talking to a strange guy on a subway, I mean, it's my job to warn people against that. I'm very sorry, truly. Have a nice day, man. <laughs> you know, if we were talking, I would tell you how wonderful you smell. If I were listening, I would say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, listen, now that we're talking again, what do you say about a date? Come on. You're a good-looking, chatty guy. I'm sure you can handle rejection. Wow, you think I'm good-looking, huh? And chatty. No, don't look so happy. I hate good-looking men. Let me tell you something. You, you know who's really hurt by hatred? The person who harbors the hatred. Yeah, that's what Gandhi said. I like Gandhi. He was butt ugly. <laughs> oh, this is oh. 59th. This is my stop. stop. Oh, wait, wait, can I at least get your phone number? What? We tell our children I let their father pick me up on the subway? Well, we're going to have children? Well, well, let's have dinner first. Oh, absolutely. Order for me. <laughs> on the other hand, my day is wide open. <laughs> Mr. Larson, you, you have a bachelor's degree in medieval literature, a master's in animal psychology, <laughs> and a doctorate in Byzantine anthropology. Do, do you have any jobs for someone with those skills? Well, not right now. <laughs> do, you, do, do, you have, do you have anything? Well, 
How do you feel about a job where you wear a hairnet and say, please talk into the clown? Do you, do you think I could get it? I'll make it happen. And please, this is just a start. Call me every day. He's talking to the clown. Please talk into the clown. Please talk into the clown. Morning. Oh, Elliot. How stupid am I? Ah, oh, you met a new guy. <laughs> On the subway. He was smart, he was cute, he was funny. He used rabble in a sentence. Correctly? Yes. Well, you are stupid. <laughs> Morning. Hey, Annie met a guy on the subway. Cool. Subway love. Been there. <laughs> hey, uh, Annie, um, so how'd you meet this guy? Oh, you did the breast thing, right? Uh, hold on. Married eight years. What's the breast thing? It's this insane theory that Roger has about rush hour in women. In Roger land, come five o'clock, Legions of women rush onto trains, maneuver themselves next to unsuspecting strap hangers. And rub their needy, luscious breasts against my back. <laughs> For your information, I did not do the breast thing. And I would not classify my breasts as needy. <laughs> Maybe a little lonely around the holidays. <laughs> Otherwise, Thelma and Louise are perfectly well adjusted. Thelma and Louise? Another time. Which one's Gina Davis? Another time. Fine. Fine. So if you didn't do the breast thing, then what did you do? I didn't do anything. I tried to ignore him. Women. They don't even know the guy and they ignore him. This is why women piss me off, Elliot. And what would you have me do with the guy on the subway? Oh, nobody's asking you to do it on the subway. What stop were you at? 59. Easy as pie. You get off, you cross to Lexington, then up to Bloomingdale's mattress department. <laughs> Don't worry. The first time they catch you, they'll let you off with a warning. And in my case, a smattering of applause. <laughs> now, now wait. Women have actually agreed to that? Yeah, the subway women. But the women on buses? Ooh, they are so special. <laughs> You think it's time you dated outside the 12-step arena? Oh, I can't. I have a huge ego and low self-esteem. In AA, that's blackjack. <laughs> Annie, I finally decided what to get Gail for her birthday. Oh, what? A gift certificate. <laughs> well, wow, Elliot, why don't you just take her to the tire store? It's a gift certificate to the tire store. <laughs> Hey, you know, I tried romantic, all right? Last year, I bought Gail a diamond pendant. She said it reminded her of a glass eye. And the year before, I took her to Paris, and she decided that French food made her lips itch. <laughs> oh, there goes Annie, feeding the sky rats. Hey, hey, they're not sky rats, they're pigeons. And I like them, they're my friends. Well, could you tell your friends not to crap on my air conditioner? <laughs> Hillary would never do that. How can you tell which one is which? Those the one banging the blue jay. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, don't jump, sweetheart. Hey, suicide's against the law. They don't have to arrest you. Okay, did you just pick any building and get lucky, or did you slip a low jack into my purse? No, neither. I'm a detective, remember? And obviously a good one. Actually, not that good. Uh... Your work address was on the magazine that you left on the train. This is Subway Boy? I pictured him taller. <laughs> I'm, uh, Peter Calder. How are you? And you are, uh, A. Period O'Donnell, huh? Call me A. <laughs> Annie. Okay. Well, listen, Annie, I'm gonna try to start this again without the vibration and the movement and some fat guy leaning against you. <laughs> Do you think we can go out sometime? I just don't go out with guys I meet on the subway. Oh, neither do I. <laughs> Annie, don't, don't think of it as a subway, okay? Think of it as a really crowded party with graffiti on the walls. <laughs> Come on, what do you say we have dinner? 
red checkered tablecloths, a nice bottle of Chianti, a bowl of pasta. Does that include dessert? You clean your plate. <laughs> Terrific. I'll pick you up at eight. Um, listen, I, I just don't want to seem like one of those easy subway women that I've heard so much about. <laughs> Let's make it eight ten. I can't believe you just said yes to a guy from the subway. I'm having trouble believing it myself. So why did you? I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to find out. No doubt about it. She did the breast thing. You're wearing that? <laughs> What's wrong with it? It says, hi, I shop at Lowman's and make under 20000 a year. <laughs> hi, I do shop at Lowman's and make under 20000 a year. I know, but darling, it's depressing. <laughs> How's this? It says leave a 50 on the dresser and toss me my beeper. <laughs> but sexy, no? <laughs> so it's a nipple ring. Are you getting one of those? <laughs> it's pushing it, huh? Yeah, it's too desperate. Wearing that on the first day says you haven't slept with anybody in seven months. You know I haven't. I know, but, but darling, darling, it's depressing. <laughs> yeah. Finally. I don't know. Am I too fluffy? Fluff is fabulous. And the good news is, it makes Thelma look roughly the same size as Louise. <laughs> Pearls or hoops? Pearls say don't even try. Hoops say... If it's nice, do it twice. I want a new best friend. Now remember, if he's at all creepy, you give him the boot. If he's creepy and rich, my number. Hey. Hey, Annie. Uh, you gotta help me. I met this girl. I really classy. Cocktail waitress, but the kind that wears a... Uh, uh, what do you call that thing? A top? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, dude. Anyway, listen, there's a good chance I'm going to have to pay for the movie. How much? Fifty ought to cover it. Fifty for a movie? If you don't feed them first, they get cranky. I'll give you twenty. Fifty. Twenty. Forty-five. Twenty. Forty. Twenty. Thirty-eight. Twenty. Fine. Hey, Roger, what about that fifty you owe me? Which I'd be willing to forget about if you'd help me paint my kitchen tonight. Oh. Oh, come on, Elliot and Gail are going to help. I'll let you use my roller. Cocktail waitress, painting your kitchen. Cocktail waitress painting your kitchen. Ooh, it's like Sophie's choice. Really? Me too. <laughs> I don't understand. The label said fire resistant. Yeah, I'm sorry, Anne. It just seemed like such a romantic idea to get a table next to the fireplace. Well, thank God you were able to put out the... <laughs> My father always taught me, if your date's on fire, put her out. Well, he taught you right. He also taught me how to spot a beautiful woman. Sure that fire's completely out? It was till now. This is very nice. Oh, no, it's not. I mean, dirty socks on the couch are not nice. But it is a good sign that I'm not one of those girls who uh, normally does this. Does what? You know, invites apartments back to their men. <laughs> no, or, uh, men back to their apartments. I don't even know what to say. Uh, what do those girls normally say? 
Hey, can I get you a drink? Oh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, can I get you a drink? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Clamato? <laughs> Gee, I don't know. First date, fish broth, it's such a cliche. <laughs> uh, okay, just stay right there and I'll be right back. I've got cute subway boy. Where? In my apartment. No way! <laughs> well, he's small. <laughs> and he's upside down. <laughs> but he's cute! All right, all right. Yeah. Elliot, she's got subway boy in her apartment! No way! Oh, I need that. Oh, what is that? Doritos. Gail! <laughs> Just tell him it's the cork. <laughs> Any really letting Subway Boy sleep over? We can only hope. <laughs> I'm so proud. Mm. Uh, damn it, I knew I should have wore a clip on. That's all right. We'll make up the time in a sec. I'm not wearing a bra. Listen, do you have an alarm? I need to get up at 4 a.m. Oh, my God, you're married. No, 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 I'm just gonna go out early with a bunch of my buddies to go shoot some doves. <laughs> As in little birds in the sky, minding their own business? Yeah, yeah, that's the best part. They get the surprised look on their tiny faces. <laughs> Would you give me a tiny sec? Just... <laughs> I thought so. How many do you need? He's a hunter. And you're his prey? I played that. Now remember, short hops. It's easier to catch you. One, two. One, two. No, 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 no. no. It's not a game. He actually shoots doves. The man is getting up at four in the morning to shoot doves. He likes to surprise them. Is he shooting them now? No. Then good fucking no. I can't. Of course you can't. Can I? Kidding. Trouble in paradise? He's a hunter. Ah. Oh! And you're his prey. I played that. <laughs> Gail always tells me that I hop too fast. Listen to me. Uh, Peter, I have an emergency. Uh, you're gonna have to go. Now? Uh, well, yeah, I know it's bad timing, but heck, that's how emergencies got their name. <laughs> you see, my friend across the hall is having a baby. I'm a certified midwife. You know, this sounds like a really lame excuse just to get me out of here. For dinner? Okay, well, can I call you sometime? Oh, absolutely. Great idea. Good luck with that stuff thing. Bird killer. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> what? Sorry. Whatever. I don't know. The best one was the guy with the multiple personality. What were his names again? I'm just, I'm so happy that my friends find my dating tragedy so funny. Oh, I'm sorry, hon. Yeah, me too. Plus, you're both wrong. The best one was the guy who wore tinfoil to ward off deadly space rays. <laughs> Good. If you're laughing, that means you're okay. Yeah, welcome back. Well, I'll tell you something. That charming guy that I grew up fantasizing about who will bring me a dozen roses and sweep me off my feet is out there somewhere. I know it. Hey! <laughs> That's not even funny. <laughs> hey, what happened? She stood you up? Oh, she stood me up. I stood her up for a little while. We're even at an angle then. <laughs> The flowers. No, 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 no. She, she, she gave them to me. You know, I like to think of it as uh, 
Oof. <laughs> Gratitude for a job well done. <laughs> so, Annie, how was your date with Subway Boy? Another time. Annie, there's a million stories in the naked city. <laughs> what, I read? <laughs> here, here. Beautiful roses belong to a beautiful lady. Oh, thank you. Oh. You see, Annie, maybe not the way you wanted, but you got your dozen roses after all. Yeah, I did. Dear Roger, roses are red, violets are blue. My mom would die if she knew I was doing you. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Cocktail waitress and a poet. You know what? What do you say we all get the hell out of here, have a drink, and celebrate? Yes. What exactly are we celebrating? How about it's Saturday night in New York City and none of us have been murdered? Oh, Ron, wait up. I, I gotta go wake up Gail. I'll meet you guys downstairs. I'm gonna change. Okay. No, no. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. I want you. I want you. I want you to leave a message. Hi, Annie. My name's Steve. Your uh, mother gave me your number. She said maybe we could go out sometime. And from your message, I can hardly wait. <laughs> there. There, Elliot. Really, that's the one who dumped on my shoe. Come on, Roger. There's ten million pigeons in New York. How do you know that's the one? Watch. <laughs> Look, he's going into his dive. Three, two, one. Oh! Big job, huh? That's a uh, score one for Roger. Ooh. Come on, guys, lay off. Give up a policeman's pension for these birds. <laughs> you guys owe me. You owe me, big. It's wild. Vic and I met in high school. We had our heads stuffed into adjoining toilets. It's pretty. I don't think you're a nerd. Everything I own is the color of mulch. Wonderful. The guys were telling me the hard times they had going up. About a million for every time I was given a wedgie. Wait, I do. Mr. Weaves, the invasion begins Friday on CBS.